How's it going everybody? This is Toastamac and welcome back to another autism vlog. Today we're going to be talking about difficulties with sleeping. But what does that have to do with autism? Well, sometimes individuals with autism or ADHD or ADD may have more difficulties going to sleep or staying asleep in comparison to neurotypicals dealing with the issue. Be it either they have a lot of energy to burn out or the fact that sometimes when they get up in the middle of the night they don't want to go back to sleep for whatever reason. Now there are a lot of reasons why someone may have difficulty sleeping, some more than others, but for the sake of this video we're only going to be going over a few of them. And if there are other difficulties with sleeping issues that I left out or you would like for me to answer, just leave it in the comments below and I'll answer it to the best of my ability, okay? Let's start out with some basics, shall we? Let's say, for the sake of argument, your kid's afraid of the dark. Woo! Wait, who turned out the lights? Come on, this isn't funny! Oh, there we go. Okay, so you could leave the lights on in the room and whatnot, but the problem is that's gonna shoot your electric bill through the roof. So what I would recommend is maybe a little night light. Something you could plug into a nearby wall socket or maybe hang on the ceiling or whatnot. Something that helps illuminate the room a little bit for your kid. And if you think it'll help, try to find a night light of their favorite color or whatnot. Maybe that'll help a bit. Unless they like to touch their favorite color, in that case, don't. But what if it has to do more with sound? Let's say the individual in question doesn't like being in a pitch quiet room where there's no noise whatsoever. There's actually a couple methods you can use to address this issue. One of them is turning on a fan if they like the sound of the wind. Just don't put the fan right next to them. Not only can it cause irritations in the throat, but it can leave the individual very cold in the morning. Trust me, I've learned that from personal experience. Another thing you can use is music. I mean, yeah, you can sing a lullaby to the kid before they go to sleep and whatnot, but what if they have a tendency of staying awake or waking up in the middle of the night afterwards? You want to play some music on maybe either a CD player or radio, or heck, you can even put music on the cell phone and play it from there. Just be careful what kind of music you choose. You don't want the kind of music like... just defeat the whole purpose and keep the kid awake and whatnot. Instead, you want calm, soothing music, something that helps the individual wind down, kind of like the music playing in this video right now. In fact, I'll put something in the description saying the name of the song and whatnot for you guys to enjoy. You can thank me later. Now, normally you would just play the music by itself, like on speakers or just directly from the phone and whatnot. But some people have tried to use headphones so that only the individual in question would hear the music, but I wouldn't recommend it. Three reasons. One is if the individual tends to move around a lot and whatnot, these headphones can feel really uncomfortable, whether it's like these or the small ones you just put in your ear. The second reason is leaving the headphones on for an extended amount of times can cause the serious ear issues later. Trust me, I've done it once, it's not fun. And the third reason, and uh, this is the most important one, is God forbid there's something like a fire or a robber that comes into the house. If the individual's wearing headphones, they're not going to be aware of any of it. Thus, they won't be warned about the situation and react appropriately. But what if it has less to do with being afraid of the dark or sound issues and whatnot, and more of what goes on during the day? There are plenty of bad habits that are picked up that can affect sleeping later on, but there are ways to deal with them as well. You just had to find the right thing. For example, uh, don't eat big foods right before you go to bed. Your stomach needs time to digest, otherwise you're going to wake up with a bad tummy ache in the middle of the night. Trust me, I've had that happen a few times. Or you can avoid caffeinated stuff like coffee or other stimulants like that. You could also do stuff like exercising or reading before you go to bed or take a hot shower or turn off computer screens an hour before you go to bed or maybe like avoid napping during the day. There, basically anything that'll help your body cool down or relax right before you go to bed but not during the day. If you like nap during the day or whatnot, it's gonna be much harder to sleep. And there's plenty more on breaking these bad habits and getting more sleep. You can easily look online to find that stuff. Some of these sleeping issues may be easier to deal with than others, 
But there are more serious medical problems that can really affect sleeping. One of which is something called insomnia, and it's actually a sleeping disorder that deals with persistent issues of going to sleep or staying asleep. It's been known to affect people from like 14 to 18 and older, and is a very serious problem. Now you can apply all the methods that, or some of them for that matter, some of the methods that I've talked about in this video, but you may want to also consider seeing a doctor about it, whether it's some of the habits you're doing, or maybe you need some over-the-counter medication, or maybe some special prescriptions for that matter. But be careful with medications, especially with the individuals with autism, ADHD, or ADD. One of the reasons is each individual reacts differently to certain medications. Hence why I can't really recommend any medications on this video because I didn't want anyone being screwed up because of it. Another thing is that sometimes certain medications you take might affect some other medications you may be on. Like if it's something to help with ADHD or AED, there are certain medications that might cause future problems for that later. So please be careful when using medication. Be sure to talk to a doctor before you do anything medical wise. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like what you saw, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if there are other sleeping issues that you know about or something I haven't listed but you would like for me to suggest or talk about, just let me know and I'll answer it to the best of my ability. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and until the next video, see you later.